Well, here we are, you guys. So we're in Tijuana and we are at BBS. So that is one of, it, I mean, it is basically the biggest skateboard manufacturer of professional quality skateboards. So here it is. We're gonna go in soon and get an inside look at how they make all this stuff and what is made here. Cause there's a lot more made here than you would expect. There it is. Well, you guys, it's hard to know where to start because there's so much to see. Unfortunately, most of the factory is really noisy. So like I can't even be in there talking cause you won't be able to hear me above all of the noise. But right now we are in um, the dyeing facilities where they dye their own veneers. We got this, it looks kind of like a medieval drowning station or something, you know, like you'd submerge somebody. I guess they have these big iron crates, which look really cool. They dunk this stuff. The dye doesn't get into the veneers just by soaking in one of those vats. It actually gets rolled into these things, big hyperbaric chambers, and it forces it with tons of pressure in and out and in and out of the wood. So that's how you actually get the dye and the pigment like saturated into the wood. These are still wet right now. And they go into this big thing, which is a furnace that dries them out so they can then be used again at the right moisture temperature for gluing together, which is around 12%. So, yep, you've probably skated something that has been in one of these cages. Okay, let's go into the rest of it and see how they slice up the veneers and stuff. Here's the full sheets. These are the guillotine. That's really cool. But apparently it has all these sensors, so if you had like a hand or a body part close to there, it just wouldn't even operate. Okay, this is the sorting station. Let me give you an example. Obviously, this isn't gonna be good for a skateboard. So they're sorting through all the grades and this is gonna get used for something else. Like they can cut this off here and this can get used for a piece of furniture, say. That's the benefit of doing more than one thing with your operation. This is the glue spreader. They have to work really fast with this stuff. Color bottom fly. Color top fly. And they have a layer of plastic separating each seven plies so they don't totally stick together. So after they get pressed, they come and they sit on a shelf for a minimum of a week. It takes a week for it to fully cure before they will cut out the skateboards because you wanna have a really strong skateboard. You do it too soon, it's not gonna be as strong. So it's way too noisy to actually film and talk in there, but let's go see what they do.
Okay, right now we're looking for a special surprise just for me. Okay. That looks good. That's the right shape. Oh, nice black one. Okay, I got an 825 and an 8125 that I had to make on a new mellow concave. Uh, it's got kind of a bluntish nose, slightly tapered tail. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna apply this graphic to it. <laughs> you would do that. There's a story behind this we'll get into in a bit. So you have enough boards over there. I think we have about eight graphics here. So leave with your, with your model. Yeah, <laughs> the pro model I never asked for. Am I going too hard? What am I doing? So there's a there's a sharp edge on it. Oh, you just want to take it, and you just basically want to just you can feel the kind of sharp edge on it. Oh, okay. Just so it's supposed it. to do that a bit. Yeah. I mean, you don't have to, but just the way that we do it, just to just to basically show the yeah, show that, veneer. That, that, that the that bottom one seventh veneer color. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, I feel that. Yeah. Kind of just roll it around and they do a good job at this. Yes. Cause this is hard. Let's see that. Hold it up. Ah, uh, no. No, I'm good. One is good. I think we should go with some stock graphics for the rest. So the backstory behind this graphic is there was a short wheelbase deck that Real did about two years ago, but the graphics were horrific. It was like something you would see on Aunt Flo's curtains or something, like some weird kind of pinkish floral print that I found rather grotesque. So I went to Michael's and I was going to buy some stencil to try and make something cool. And then nothing was really cool. So I decided to make something stupid and I bought these Martha Stewart stencils and I, you know, did the unicorn and said real skateboards on it. So this is Jim's way of getting back at me. But uh, no, the shape, the shape and the board, they nailed it. So yeah. This will be a wall hanger and hopefully I can get them to do some logo graphics for something else. <laughs> so my only problem with this sample was that it was too short. And if we look at this one right here, it's almost a half inch longer. So they did it. I'm really stoked to try out this board. Yeah, let's do this one here. What? Ah, that's pretty good. That one looks good. I think this is the one I'm gonna start riding. Yeah? Yeah. That's a really good choice. Yeah. I'm setting up the Una Ferrar. I've met her in real life. She's really nice, so that's definitely, also it's an awesome graphic. But yeah, got some Calvier grip going on here. Another person I met in real life, who is an awesome guy, Seva. Oh, that really sticks. I might be in trouble here. Whew. Lucky it had some flex. That's good. All right, so I actually measured this deck, came out just a little bit longer than I thought, but there's an easy solution when a board is too long for me, and that's to switch trucks. So I'm switching from Venture Lows to Venture Highs, and I went and made my own custom set of Venture Highs. I also grabbed 
a whole bag of gold hardware, washers, bolts, so I can bling out every set of ventures I ever own now. I never have to have plain silver or black hardware ever again. It can be all this hardware. <laughs> you guys like my custom truck? And it's got the uh, cash only, Alaka Lang, local Vancouver guy. So I'm pretty stoked on that. We'll get this set up with some brand new Swiss bones and some 51 millimeter classics. That'll be nice. All right, let's give this a quick little rip in this bowl with really rusty coping. They have, they have a bowl here. That was that, good. That counts. Well, you guys, that ended kind of abruptly and it didn't turn out exactly as I expected because I went in there thinking that I was gonna be filming a like, this is how BBS does everything, but they had their own plans to present that board to me, um, which if you couldn't tell, I was actually pretty bummed and they had like eight of the graphics. I thought they were gonna put them on all eight of the boards. I was like, no, I'm not gonna ride those. Um, I think it's pretty funny what Jim did, the way he set that all up. Uh, but yeah, I kind of, I knew we were gonna do something with that silly graphic I made, but I didn't think it was gonna be my name underneath. But like I said, you know, touche, Jim. Um, that was a pretty good one. I also did another one that I thought was even better. I did this one as well. <laughs> like I said, these are just like some ridiculous stencils I bought because those graphics that were originally on these boards were, in my opinion, so bad they couldn't get any worse, right? Like this is an improvement over what they were. So anyways, uh, yeah, good shape though. It's a shape that they only did once and, um, you know, I think it's kind of too bad that they didn't remake those shapes with a better graphic. So this one is like an 8.5 and it has a 14.125 wheelbase, which is hard to find. And they only did it on that one run. Whereas like, I don't know, put it on this graphic, you guys. Just keep my name off of it this time. <laughs> um, anyways, it was amazing to see what they did. I would say the thing I was impressed by with BBS was like the scale at which they operate and how it seems like there is just no wasted time or materials. Like I couldn't believe the lengths they go to to ensure that um, number one, the best quality wood is going into the skateboards. Like the fact that they do all those other sort of furniture things, like there's a lot of stuff I didn't show in the video that they do, um, but because they make all these other products, they can save only the best stuff for the skateboards. Yeah, it's, I, I really can't convey like how big and how efficient and how well run the whole thing was. Um, I don't think I could actually show everything they do on video, right? And, you know, like they do all their own in-house graphics. We got a tour through all of the graphics and sticker making and everything, right? Like you wouldn't believe how much they actually do in-house, but I can't go showing uh, every company and all their graphics that haven't been released yet, right? So, you know, we'd need to get permission from every single company and that would be ridiculous. So there was a lot of stuff I chose just to not show in this video. I was honored to get to go down there. Yeah, it was just a cool experience being there. We had a great lunch, uh, got to sit in a meeting with a whole bunch of guys and then, um, you know, like do all that custom stuff, the trucks. But I didn't end up riding that setup I chose. Um, you can see in this flat ground footage, like I can tell right away when I start riding a board if I'm gonna be in tune with it or not. And like everything that I tried to do on that exact setup was off. And I think it was mostly just um, going from venture lows to venture highs was like a shock to the system. 
Whereas when I got home, I ended up setting up the 825. So this is the actual shape that's going to be coming out um, for real. And I've been skating this one for a couple months now. And I'm riding Venture Highs, but it's the forged plate ones. So they're a little bit lower. Uh, the wheelbase is actually a little bit wider, which helps balance out that 14 inch wheelbase, which can be kind of hard, you know, for taller people to ride. But because of the Forge Ventures being extra wide, it just all balances out. I still have two boards left from the trip. I've got this one with the Ron Allen graphic and I've got an anti-hero one. So those are both the 825, same shape as this one. And I'm still riding the same wheels and bearings, the Bone Swiss and the whatever, the 51 millimeter classics. So yeah, that was a cool trip. I'm super grateful for the opportunity to go there. And um, in a little bit, maybe in a week or two, I'm going to be uploading a video about this deck. So you guys can hear a little bit more about what went into developing that and what um, my input in the process was. So I wanna say a huge thanks to BBS and anyone at Deluxe that helped make this all happen. It was a really cool opportunity. Very grateful that this all has happened. You know, it all started by me posting YouTube videos and over time it's grown into something where I've gotten to meet a lot of really cool people and have a lot of really cool experiences. So thanks for that, you guys. Yeah, till the next one.